everyone, my name is Gabriel Morales and welcome back to Liquid Session where we taste different bottles of booze. I have a special guest today, Mr. Kevin Baird. Oh, hi. How you doing? Pretty good, pal. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming over and short notice. Um, so tell me a little bit about yourself. Um, so I've worked in food and beverage for a long time. Um, mostly the on-premise world. And I worked for a mezcal brand for a while. So I spent just a little bit of time in uh, Mexico, uh, Oaxaca. And um, I'd say I have a pretty comprehensive spir uh, and spirit based knowledge palette. Um, but this is a really appealing tasting to me because uh, I really prefer unaged spirits personally. Why is it that you like unaged spirits? Well, I think um, whether it's like the, the esters that are created during fermentation or just all this, um, all this really valuable stuff that comes from whether it's your soil or just the, the fermentation interacting with whatever is in the atmosphere. Um, it's a pretty magical thing that happens. So to cover that up with the, the barrel, I mean, maybe, maybe that sounds like a little derogatory to say cover up, but the longer you age it, the more that disappears. Yeah, it's like this trend of raw juice bars. Yeah, <laughs> exactly okay. that. Right. And you worked with a mezcal brand you mentioned. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Sure. Uh, so I worked for Casa Amores, which is also Casa Amaras in the United States. And they are they're a mezcal brand. And um, they have several SKUs available in the US. Um, they have a couple of Espadines and a Cupriata. And they're, they're a wonderful company. To learn about uh, the other side of the business, I'd always been on the side where I'm ordering liquor and dealing with distributors, um, but to, to be on the, the off-premise, not the off-premise, but uh, the supplier side, um, really offered me a lot of perspective. I learned a lot of things from that. Hmm. Hmm. What would you say was your favorite thing of being with uh, Mezcal Company? I would say probably the expense account. <laughs> it's, uh, it's to have an expense account in New York City, uh, it's a pretty cool thing. Um, but yeah, uh, that, it was really great. Um, I mean, I'm pretty, um, pretty like firm brass by New York City, and I've been to a lot of places, but that enabled me to visit all the places that I hadn't been to yet. Um, so that, that was, uh, that, I mean, there's significant value in that. Um, that was the coolest part of that job. However, uh, I mean, visiting Mexico uh, for a brand trip, uh, whether it was the, the corporate offices in Mexico City, that was my first time in Mexico City. Hmm. Um, but then also Oaxaca, like the eastern like Sierra Mountains in Oaxaca are phenomenally beautiful. Yeah. And then also just to see the the process to visit the Palenques. Oftentimes the Palenques work with a collective of different brands and uh, like they're supplying juice to uh, so all sorts of people. people. Mm -hmm. And then maybe even not for a brand or for a market, they're just, they're kind of working on their own projects. Yeah. You know, throwing scorpions in 140 proof, still strength juice. I, uh, I had one like that when I visited. They said it was good for your for your cough. Oh yeah? When you get sick, you just have a little bit of that and it helps you. Yeah, the tarantula is good for your libido. Like, like every every different thing they put in there is good for something, you know? It's like, sure. Thank you for sharing all that. Um, I think we're gonna, we should start tasting some agaves. Uh, so we have three different ones, El Jimador, Fortaleza, and Casa Dragones. All three of these have a completely different price range of this. I think this starts at about 50 to $20. The, our base level entry, then we have a, a mid-range, which this one ha is from 40 to 46, or almost 50 in some place. Uh, and then this is uh, gonna be your higher end Blanco Tequila, which is in the 80 to $90 range. Uh, let's just start from base level to all the way up. Is that enough for you? More than enough. Great. Uh, I've worked at places that have had this in the well, actually. I mean, this is 100% agave tequila. I think as long as you use an 100% agave tequila for your cocktails, at mm. least you're doing something right. Uh, 
I haven't actually seen it recently, uh, but I definitely have um, seen it in Wells and used it in Wells before. Um, but in the, in the New York market, I, I feel like it was maybe a little less common. It's true. Uh, I think in the New York market, there was only at one place that I've had this in the Wells, and then most places was the uh, Ret, which I think is still in the more or less same price range. I think I, it might be a little bit more expensive. Cimarron was another one that I would see a lot. Yeah. Um, and uh, I mean, these are fantastic juices also. El Himidor, it's, a, it's been years, I think, since I tasted it. So uh, yeah. All I right. Like to brush up. Without further ado. Salud. Salud, my friend. What do you got in the nose? Um, I kind of I get like a mix of pine and like like a nutty element, mm -hmm. but more like like pine nuts, like less so like almonds and more. Um, I get like a sweet nuts, like, really? like like almost like honey like. Yeah, I get. I'm getting kind of like this. It's like pine and um, yeah, like like alpine. Pine nuts, and uh, it's uh, and maybe like a little bit of menthol. Like it's really yeah. It smells I really good. That. It smells really like clean. Yeah, yeah. That was um, a, a lot of what I got on the nose transferred into the palate. However, uh, it's not particularly viscous, um, and it has a relatively short finish. Yeah, uh, it's it's I not agree. it's not incredibly complex. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it also it doesn't have uh, like any harsh element or some of the petrol that I re I've tasted in some uh, more inexpensive uh, like just baseline tequilas. Yeah, um, you do get a little agave, not as much as others, but I think yeah. at least you do get a little bit of the agave. Yeah, which I think is like the most important thing. But maybe maybe the distillation process kind of cleans it off a little bit. Some, yeah, some. It's a. Uh, it's kind of like that menthol and maybe like this that, like pine element that I was getting that transfers through more than anything. Mm. Um, as far as like the like the nuttier elements and like the like the richness of the agave, I'm I not getting a whole lot of that on the palate necessarily. Mm. Um, but it's totally respectable tequila. Like that is sippable. Yeah, for its price, that's actually that's not completely awful. <laughs> I'm I'm a little surprised. I'm a little surprised at how sippable it is. So. Cool. Uh, would you use this? Would you sip this with a beer, or would you? I think uh, though it is sippable. Uh, I think it probably has uh, multiple uses. Like I mean, I would imagine, like, like your Casa Dragonas with price, and then uh, Fortaleza with its mystique beauty. Uh, I may not necessarily be reaching for those bottles for margaritas. Whereas the Alhimador um, is not incredibly nuanced and is probably uh, ideal for margarita. So um, margaritas are even uh, if, if you wanted to, you know, hit it with some like some stirred applications. Um, uh, Alhimador, I'm sure I could eat those. Cool. I think that settles that for that one. Uh, shall we move forward with this? This um, is one of my personal favorites. It's, I think I'm a little biased with it because I went to their distillery mm -hmm. and they took me to their distillery, uh, the Aret distillery, mm -hmm. and also the Don Polano distillery. Uh, three complete different distilleries. Um, but it's such a beauty in the small town of Tequila, and which is already an incredible, beautiful town. Uh, but yeah, I've talked about this in some of my previous videos, but I'm wondering, uh, have you had it in the recent uh, past? Or I would say maybe not that recently, actually. Okay. But Fortaleza is hailed by some of uh, like some of the most refined palettes that I know prefer Fortaleza, and it's always been a favorite of mine. Yeah. Um, so this is actually a highland tequila, and this is a lowland. Mm. Uh, there is a difference on terms like usually highland tequilas tend to be like spicier or 
or like have a little bit of that pine element while the lowlands sometimes tend to be like slightly more floral uh, there's just a difference of that altitude and how the agave grows that has something to do with it um, yeah I think uh, you can draw some parallels there between like some of the like the Caribbean like spirits like some of the rums like, yeah uh, uh, I, but I know there it's typically because of like volcanic islands so like the higher the elevation the more uh, like volcanic soil you have yeah so, which produces like more grassier elements I think with it's similarly with wine like a, a lot of wine people that love wine similar thing with the difference in altitude where the grapes grow and the difference in soil and temperature change as well right uh, anyways let's try it Um, Much different. Phenomenally fragrant on the nose. Oh yeah. Um, it's about as grassy as I recall, uh, but also perhaps more floral than I remember. Um, pretty, they're pretty delicately floral. Like this is a... Um, this really reminds me of like the beautiful town and all their trees and just like how beautiful it was. That's that's how it smells to me. It smells beautiful. Yeah. So that the floral element, which is, seems to be pretty dominant uh, for me, uh, translates directly to the palate. Mm -hmm. uh, it is very floral on the palate. Um, <clears throat> also very smooth. Um, I'm not really getting any uh, any like nutty elements, um, mm -hmm. but it, it's um, you know it's like. Kind of meaty amount of viscosity, I would say. Um, but yeah, also like a, a medium to short finish. Uh, it's not hanging with me for too too long. Um, the grassy elements are in check, but it's a uh, it's floral. Yeah, I agree with you. I think I get a slightly like I don't I wouldn't say a short finish for me. I'm getting more of a medium, uh, but it does drop off after that medium point. Uh, I think it's really enjoyable, uh, even just neat. I think for for the price, you're getting a quite complex Blanco tequila. Mm. This is straight up really nice, and uh, you you get the agave, and mm. I think it does what it's supposed to do. Uh, I agree. I also, uh, like the longer it sits on my palate, the more I get something of like an almond, or no, excuse me, olive brine. Uh, so oh, olive of, brine. Yeah, it's like, um, it's like floral, it gives way to like olive brine. Like if you think about like a Castle Vetrano olive, you know, it's, something, it's like an olive that's a little bit more on the buttery side, more than briny. So uh, I get a little bit of that. Um, that's really nice. Do you know much about Castle Vetrano's? Not as much as you. I don't really know that crazy amount. Um, I do know that they are more focused to make the sipping tequila, the perfect luxury sipping tequila. And um, they actually want to achieve a very smooth finish. So uh, I think they call them distill this. Okay. Um, I do not know if they harvest their own agaves. I think I want to say no. Um, and I am not sure. I'm pretty sure they do a roller mill as well. So yeah. roller mill instead of a tahona, which this guy is doing a tahona. And roller mill, as far as like sourcing their agave, are all indicative of pretty high volume operations. Yeah. Casa Dragonis is. It's a high volume. High volume. Delicious as it may be, it is ubiquitous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyways. Finish that. For myself. This. Uh, I'm pretty sure this retails for about 90 bucks, depending on where you are. Uh, they have different iterations. A, the Blanca, which we're having right now. They also have a Hoven, which is their I think that retails for about $200, $300 a bottle. And is that one, that's the... Uh... That's the white, that's, it's, it looks exactly like this, mm -hmm. but it has like a black ribbon. Right. Um, I am, 
I'm pretty sure as this is white instead of blue. Gotcha. Can't recall. Uh, that's like that's a blend of Hovens and Reposado, or I think it is a blend of Añejos and Hoven. Okay. Um, Wait, I don't 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 quote me on that though. Whereas this is entirely unrested. Uh huh. Okay. If it, I think it's rested, maybe just you know how blancos can be rested days. up to yeah sixty okay. days. Yeah, I think it's rested slightly and stainless steel. Uh, don't quote me on that too though. <laughs> Quoted. There's no turning back. Salute. Complete different notes. Yeah. <clears throat> that nutty almond attribute that I, I keep talking about. Uh, I get some of that here, but I also think it's the most mild on the nose. Yeah. Uh, out of all three of these, definitely okay. the most uh, discreet. Discreet is a, is a good word. It's like, and it's, it's there, but it's, it's, it's just there. for certain the, mo the most discreet. I feel like it's, I'm having to kind of search for it. Some of the grass is coming through. Right now. Yeah, this is very different. Um, also, it's the most viscous out of the three. Yeah. Um, for certain. Uh, but also, on the body, that the mellow character is. Uh, I would say it's still very mellow, um, flavor wise. But it is like, definitely the fullest and most buttery. Hmm. Yeah, I it, it is it has that richer mouth feel. Um, it has somewhat of a medium finish, but I think in terms of flavor overall, uh, I, I think it really it's really closer than this than, than what I thought it would be. Closer to this to, in flavor yeah. profile? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I would agree. I would agree. This is a um, yeah, it, it kind of sips like a like a stick of grass-fed butter. Uh, <laughs> grass-fed butter. <laughs> yeah, it's a uh, it's good, um, but for people seeking the smoothest, I mean, as a as a bartender, I mean, what what characteristic do you hear more than the word smooth uh, from consumer side? Yeah, yeah. So if you that every day, if you're looking for smooth, <laughs> except no substitutes, uh, it's certainly the the fullest and smoothest. Yeah, um, but it's it's rather uh, it's rather mellow. So I would say Custard Dragon is, is definitely. Um, I mean, though it might be a pricey tequila, um, we just, I would say it's a good entry level tequila. If yeah. that's what you, I would say if if that's what you're looking for, if you're looking for something that doesn't, uh, I mean, is is easy to take down. Um, it's full enough to where there's there's no burn of any sort. There's nothing that screams. There's nothing that's too loud about it. Um, it's a it's a very easy drink. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's true. So, with Cinco de Mayo coming up, which tequila would you prefer to have? Oh man. I, I'll tell you, uh, I mean, all three for different reasons. Um, this is the tequila I'm going for for my margaritas. I'm actually really surprised at how much this stands up uh, in it, for its own purposes against these other two tequilas. Yeah. Uh, I'm, really, uh, I'm really surprised. Yeah. Uh, I remember re before we started, ta uh, we were kind of prepping for this video, we started talking and you were saying, hey, it's okay if I talk shit about this tequila. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, is there anything I shouldn't say? <laughs> Any words that are off limits? Because um, this is actually, it's different than what I remember. Um, and maybe I you know, never spent a whole lot of time with it, but uh, I'm actually really surprised at how it's showing today for us. Um, so this is what I'm going to reach for for uh, my margarita. Um, over these two, like no question, that's what I'm gonna do. Um, and if I uh, if I was going to shoot something on Cinco de Mayo, uh, I think Casa Dragonas. Where if you had asked me about this a few weeks ago, or yesterday, I would have said maybe don't shoot this because uh, it's not cheap. But yeah. for something you just you're going to just um, just like take down, and you, you wanted like an, an easy shot, and you're not gonna think too much about it. Uh, I don't think Casa Dragonas requires a lot of thinking. So. <laughs> and whereas Fortaleza, I mean, um, its prestige and its beauty is uh, it's 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 shown today. Um, it's uh, that's going to be my sipper 
Yeah. So this is my margarita shooter, and this is the one I'm going to spend time with, uh, just sitting by itself and uh, appreciating. Awesome. Uh, can we make margaritas with this? I think we shall. Margarita girl. So we're back with three different margaritas. They're all the same spec. We use three quarter ounce of fresh lime juice, half an ounce of agave syrup, and two ounces of tequila. My friend has no idea which one's which, but I do know. And uh, I think we should just go ahead and taste them from your side or my side. Okay. Face what's on here. Yeah. The thing that you're not allowed to say is that I make terrible margaritas. I didn't sign that disclaimer. <laughs> mm. It's a great margarita. Mm -hmm. Sugar and acid balance, and it is tasty. I'm not getting any grass. I'm not. I'm not getting any anything that uh that like loudly punches through this. Uh, if anything, it's maybe it's it's a. Uh, it could be kind of round. So if the the roundness of the the body is a direct correlation, then uh, if the, I mean if that's where the body's coming from, rather than the agave nectar, uh, this could quite possibly be the cause of All right. Okay. Okay. Uh, you want to start with the next. But that's a good observation. Yeah, I, because body-wise, this is uh, quite a bit thinner. Somehow it's a little bit fruitier than the previous. Um, considerably more tropical than the previous, somehow. Yeah, yeah. Like, I think this one... Huh, it's interesting. I like them both. They're great. Number two is delicious. Cool. I mean, I'm gonna try to reserve my comments because I don't want to give it away. <laughs> Wow. Um, this one is um, it's another balanced margarita, Gabe. Okay, another balanced margarita. <laughs> wow. It just comes down <laughs> to my balanced margaritas. <laughs> um, um, as far as favorite, that is, that is my least favorite. There's, um, I, I used that word petrol earlier. Um, and I'm kind of getting some of that. There's a there's a there's a flavor there's a flavor coming through that I don't uh, enjoy uh, in that margarita. Mm -hmm. That it's right there as soon as, as soon as you hit it, and then I'm, I'm left with it even now on on my palate. The aftertaste. Cool. So I don't know if it's the uh, the acidity that's exposing something in the tequila. Uh. Um, you want to put the bottles on which which one is which? It's just a guess. Very close. Yeah. But there's one slight change. Mm. Really? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Well, so Casa Dragonis makes an incredible margarita. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Is it maybe because it's just so clean, the mouthfeel that com it's combined with combined with the lime and the sugar that just makes it a really nice margarita? I mean, I, for me, I would still choose my favorites are between these two. Yeah. Yeah, it's but, um. But I don't know if I'm if I want like a lot of tropicalness in my margarita. So I give the slight edge to this. Sure. 
Um, just because like there was also like a slight salty quality to it that was just natural in it, yeah. that was perfect in the margarita, and that's why I would I would say this is the winner for me. Well, being a um, being a real daiquiri nerd, I think that's probably why I was inclined to number two here. Uh, uh -huh. Well, the the middle. Um, it because it, it's so full and round and fruity, and so I guess it certainly makes sense that the the body of the, of the Casa de Gronis, like provides like a really lush, tropical feeling and tasting margarita. Um, but I definitely enjoyed this one as well. They're all drinkable margaritas at the end of the day. Um, it's interesting that in neat you didn't find too much petrol feeling on this. Uh, tequila, right. but then with the margarita, you're like, oh wait, I'm getting a little bit of that, so that kind of like stands out after you mix a little bit of citrus and sugar with it. Um, I think in general, all three they're viable for your Cinco de Mayo party, anyways. Like, I would probably just dump a whole bottle of this on a big batch of margaritas and just take it to the beach or something like that, and just like, hey, we're at the beach, just hanging out. All three, totally drinkable. Yeah. You're right about that. Well, Kevin, thanks for joining. Um, before we go, which uh, tequila do you think is worth spending the money on? I'm gonna have to say the Fortaleza. Fortaleza, yeah. For sure. We Thank agree you. on that on both. Yeah. If, if you're gonna grab a bottle, you'll grab a Fortaleza. Definitely. Also, their, uh, their Reposado showcases really well, too. I've had their Still Strength a few times, and um, it's a, uh, it's some it's not my preference. I definitely would take uh, the Blanco. So mm. should be probably the easiest one to find as well at your store. So oh yeah, I'd say definitely the Fortaleza for me. So. Awesome. Well, thanks thanks again for joining. Uh, if is there anywhere that we can find you if any of the, anyone is interested? Yeah, I uh, I've been working at uh, at Coat with you. Um, so yeah, just uh, working there. I'm like, few days a week, having a really good time. Actually, I moved down here to work for Coat, so it was a wonderful establishment, and so uh, that's where we're uh, you know, shaking and stirring things up over there. For sure, we will be able to, definitely if you want a Casa de Gornes Margarita, we will be able to do that for you. <laughs> um, but I think this is gonna conclude this video. Thanks so much for watching. This is also gonna conclude my series of five videos leading up to Cinco de Mayo. I hope everybody has a fantastic time. Uh, there's gonna be links for all the previous video down in the comments and the description down below. Let me know also which tequila would you prefer to choose out of the price point or whatnot, or if there's any te other tequila that wasn't showcased today, leave it in the comments below. Thanks again for watching. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe, share with friends, and I'll see you all the next one. Cheers. Um, cool. <laughs> it's all good. We can either keep it as a blooper or <laughs> turn it on. <laughs> Your face was priceless though. Good people got to text me. Yeah. <laughs> Such a busy man. <laughs> um, nah, sorry. Uh, so.